Welcome to His House of Learning Podcast number 11. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Aging in the 21st Century A Population of Former Youth This episode's topic of study and discussion is, well, due to the fact that on the extreme end of the baby boomer population is gradually passing away and nearly all are virch nearly all are, are retired from mainstream society and likely be confirmed as such within the next five years which means a complete transition to the highest and most experienced class of uh, class of people being that of generation x and then managerial as a whole no longer entry level millennials including myself and then well and z will be will will be the uh, laboring backbone followed by a well that's the thing as well there's alpha but why do I say aging in the 21st century a population of former youth because each succeeding generation if current trends go with reproduction and life expectancy is getting smaller and smaller so and we all know about this is nothing new to, or you should there's nothing new about it. it's been actually something that was calculated a decade ago that the world population would hit about 10 to 11 billion at peak within this century and then decline well because yeah if each generation is successfully getting smaller then that means there are successfully fewer Babies, fewer children, fewer young adults, and repeating the cycle, maintaining. Hence, for the foreseeable future, amongst most communities, amongst most areas, it will become more gray. Indeed, God bless those neighborhoods and towns and sections of cities wherever this, or villages <laughs> is the only continent as a whole with birth rate above you know, above the uh, stabilization is the continent of Africa so if you want to hear the laughter of children on a regular basis you're gonna to have to go to the to the dark continent but I'm just grateful that there's still children, there's still youth around where I'm at, in spite of it being a retirement town. We'll see how, what takes place next five to ten years. So why is it so important? Well, because like I said, on one end, you have those retiring and settling down and uh, really just taking in all the change and transition from that of their childhoods to their current years. And generally speaking, of course there's discontent. But likewise, there is discontent among Generation Z, those who are old enough to really recognize that the opportunities of, of the past are few, minimal, scant, and really the culture, society, the very soul of a people at large has changed in a way that has become well apathetic and different if not hostile to even human relations or even human contact of course exacerbated by those who have uh, continued to adopt the attitudes and changes of 2020 my dear listeners our opening passage is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First few verses, 
Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Why is this so important? What does this got to do with anything? Simple. Aging. Hello. We're dying. And we are living in a time of where which we can no longer escape our mortality, escape the vanity that is the very, this very thing called life expectancy. For those who've been alive for over half a century, you're very well aware how short life is. And for those of us who are adults, including Generation Z in your early 20s, you probably are starting to realize that the years go by and there's only so much you can do, so much you can accomplish each season. We are living in a time of which it'll be much harder for people, and you will have to indulge in grander delusion to escape the fact that there are things more important than what the world has put before us than what we were told. Whether it be our dreams, our financial security, our economic prosperity, our mental health, and psychological well-being, going back and forth between younger and older concerns. But what have you, your eternity? Death is at every man's doorstep, but it does not have to be a curse for every man. For after all, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. My dear brethren, do not contemplate death, do not contemplate your last breath, or a final heartbeat, as something meant to cast despair, and woe, cynicism, pessimism. No, if anything, it is, if you are truly Truly, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, by the res by resurrected Savior Jesus Christ, it should be a cause for, for joy. I'll be 33 in February. Imagine that, a decade ago, I was one year out of university. And within those 10 years, so much has transpired Um, I'm quite you know, content to say I've lived such a fairly good life. And really, at this point, really I'm just, you know, just so blessed that the only thing on this side of heaven that would make it just so much more thrilling would be having children. Yeah, that's it. Not advancing my job, not having a big ministry and reaching so many people. And hey, you know what? If I manage to influence a number of you to grow closer to the Lord, or for a number of you to accept Him as your all in all, to repent and become a new creature, born in the Spirit. Ready, ready to live and to die. For to live is Christ, to die is gain. To live is to be like Christ, who overcame the world. You hear that, Generation Z? To baby boomers, regardless of where you're at. And even if you're, if you're happy to be an alpha, you shouldn't be listening to my podcasts. It's more so reserved for pubescence and up, but I usually 
try to keep it a, a, a usually it's usually appropriate, but perhaps probably not too well understood by prepubescent minds. But anywho, regardless, applies to all of you. The one who overcame the world, who overcame death. That's a blessed hope right there. And yet today we live in an age of doubt. Doubt? Doubt of what? Truth? Well, I guess if you're so... I guess if, you're, if you are the one truly living in the cynicism of the finality of life, of growing older, of hopelessness, of aging, the loss of the false promises given to us, that man's institutions, systems, establishments, civil and economic powers could promise us everything from cradle to grave. Let's face it, a lot of us so-called conservatives and traditionalists, right-wingers, you know, small government, small mom-and-pop shops, and yet, nonetheless, we still put our faith, put our trust, put our hopes and dreams in what? In the same things that age, that decay, that die like we do. Not exactly the most intelligent decision. Very foolish. Especially if you claim to be a disciple of the eternal Jesus Christ. Doubt, doubt, doubt. So much doubt. It's okay to doubt I hear these days. I'm doing a separate talk on doubt later. But for now, I scoff at those who say, Well, I doubt. <laughs> well, and you'll probably doubt this. Verse 5 onwards, And that he was seen, Jesus Christ, of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Get to that next. For now, what do I have to say to doubters? <laughs> Please. In this, in this age of former youth, as we all become more gray, I've never seen so many people arrogantly say, I doubt, I doubt, I doubt the word of the Lord, and yet... You have faith in, you have put your trust in, you believe in things of which you have not seen. You yourself have not, with your own ears, have heard, touch, taste, or smell. Because it's what you feel, it's what you want, it's what you imagine. Oy. And it's and it's, and isn't it quite the 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 irony? Rather than manning up, owning up. Facing, facing life and death, and all its, all its finalities, and all the things of which we have no control over. What do we do? In this aging population, ironically, we are the most entertained. And much of this entertainment that's being pumped out to Generation Z and Alpha, if you notice, originated with us millennials and a fair amount from Generation X. But still, as a whole, the younger is consuming, still indulging as a whole. Notice, major it seems the majority of it, if you pay close, it's close, you know, close attention, is really based on that of the older yet younger generations, so, so to speak. And why? Because, well, people would argue it's all, it's all marketing. Think about it. X and millennials. If we're far larger and far greater in number, have more money than our younger counterparts, well, who are going to sell their merchandise and wares to? Who are they going to want to tantalize in the long run? And hopefully, as they remake everything, 
to placate us and to uh, well let's face it it's a private pub you know public private sector it's no skin off the government's nose military the education system media etc if we're if we're distracted by our childhood fantasies by our nostalgia and it's kind of strange too because a common statement is okay boomer okay boomer and why because they never because boomers and what 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 was that said i remember since 2016 up until about 2021 boomers do not know how to change and some people were adept enough to a, adopt the, the boomer mindset to those who were millennials but kudos to them for being observant but yes and yet it's true and you see we look at our our you know, our, you know, look we look at our our elders and we say ah they did not change and thus change and see and see what was going on and thus here are we are left 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 to pick up the pieces and yet we resign ourselves to childishness see at least for them they were trying to go look back to their to the prime of their adulthood and yet what do we cling to yes the comfort of childhood during a time where we were more ignorant that even when we were going through much strife and trouble and sorrow despair because of our youth we didn't fully comprehend the full weight of things so even the pain of childhood in many ways is more bearable than that of adulthood and so we doubt and we doubt and we doubt the word of the lord oh yeah sure they saw jesus oh yeah sure he resurrected how we know how we know please please if you claim to be my my brother in christ and you have doubts but you're infatuated with entertainment fiction and you're willing to go along with the crowd as far as pop culture and public consensus not an opinion anymore it's consensus just whatever people find to be suitable given such situation circumstance whatever whatever second hand nobody actually read it or heard it themselves Peer pressure, like we're still in junior high. Go ahead and doubt. Why should I care about your doubt? Generally speaking, you don't believe in much of anything. Especially things that are real. <laughs> but not to slam you, because this is a problem for all of us. Think about this. Well, before I give the example, it ties into this, actually. I don't watch movies, but I do try to stay in touch with the general popular stories to see what's, uh, what's fogging the minds of my fellow men. Verse 9, For I am the least of the apostles that am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. And that's the thing, I'm not expecting my words to just, oh, look, I've seen the light and convert. No. I'm just the messenger. You respond to the spirit or you don't. He transforms you. He empowers you. I'm just the messenger. One of these days, I will pass away. One of these days, I will not be able to speak into to this microphone. And regardless of who is encouraging, inspiring you, you got to go to the source. No more secondhand stuff. Once again, 
if I do exhort you, encourage you enough to where you decide, you know what, I'm going to be doing things of which I have no time to be listening to this man because I'll be too busy living a life that the Lord would have me to live amongst my family, friends, my neighbors, my church brethren, etc. I say, great. <laughs> Fantastic. You've answered my prayers. That is my desire. That's why I try to limit my time, how much effort I put into this online ministry, because my primary ministry is those within my immediate reach. Thus I, and thus I am to mature and grow in prayer. For I am also the least of disciples. Sure. I was saved at the age of eight, so I can't say I persecuted the church, but let me tell you something. Being alive for so long, you can't, life so, so long, and facing, facing the evil, facing the sin, facing the old man. For my dear brethren, as we grow older, as our bodies begin to lose their properties, what is eternal about us, our spirits, our souls, and whatever's attached of our minds attached to it needs to become new. Our, our temporary selves fade, but our eternal selves grow ever more pure, according in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is he who gives us new life, and that life, that abundant eternal life, is finalized in heaven. Sure, we grow older, but we are to become younger. Imagine that. Imagine what God, and true, another one of his titles is the Ancient of Days. That's because he's timeless. <laughs> he doesn't die, which means what? He doesn't age. He's more hip, young, and cool, and relevant than any of us could ever be. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So if you doubt that Christ rose from the grave or anything else of that nature, oh, well then, you're wasting your time. Because time is running out for all of us. Well, here. So in general, for those who trust in him, and their great white hope is in the great white rider on a white horse with many crowns and a sword coming to rule this earth and set all things straight. And imagine that. We'll be young forever. But until then, well. But that's the thing. Speaking of the movie references, what do both generation older and younger have in common? We mainly, you know, gladly, you know cling Clean to the years gone by. The Barbie movie. If you look up the actresses and the actors, you'll notice something interesting. Now, when you think of the Barbie film, my first thought was, oh, the average actress is going to, an actor is going to be in their 20s. More so their early to mid 20s. But then when you look at the stats, Actually, at the time of filming, the median age for the women, well, about mid-30s. About mid-30s, mid to late 30s. And for the men, it was late 30s, early 40s. Of course, once again, targeted towards who? Millennials and Generation X. And what other film... What other classic of similar nature did the very same thing? 
Well, there's quite a few of them, but let me cut to the chase. Greece, same thing. Bunch of 30, 40 somethings, all pretending to be in high school again. In fact, uh, my wife made a comment. She always wondered, why were the parents never shown in Greece? And my comeback was, well, because then you would realize that they weren't, <laughs> that, they, that they weren't teenagers. <laughs> That's the thing. People in their early 20s, alongside put along the people in their 40s and 50s, yeah, there's a greater visual as far as age. So it's like, okay, child, parent, got it. In Greece, no, that, that would have worked. Same thing for, for, for the Barbie movie, if, if it were in that case. Of course, let's face it. But and there's so many other films like that. Where you have older men and women... Living out the fantasies. Oh, but look, I'm still seen as sexy by these younger, by these younger people. Oh, look, I'm still cool. I'm still, I'm still important. I'm still. Yeah. The vanity of, of it all. Vanity of all. It's like, and those are the mindsets that we'll easily slip into. If not, some, so many of us are, are tempted with, and yet we'll doubt things like the implications of the resurrection of Christ. Or the reality of the afterlife. For shame, for shame. Verses 15 through 20. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. So yeah, if we claim that, oh yeah, remember, our, remember the Christian... Religion, Christian faith, Christian spirituality is based on like what the, the crux of it is. Christ has to resurrect. Oh no, 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 no! It's not necessary because yeah, he was a, he, he was a good person and he was a great teacher and he was still right. Okay, but he's dead. If he didn't re resurrect. He's dead, just like everybody else. We're all gonna die. So yeah. Take take your self help guru somewhere else. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. And that's the prime problem. That's the prime problem. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable but now is christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept first fruits meaning now he can he's he, think about this we're all trees and we die except we cannot bear fruit and bring forth more life he is an eternal tree that will keep seeding and thus, you can resurrect others back to life. But let's go back to verse 17. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. I doubt, I doubt, I doubt. Meanwhile, let me pursue my childhood, the, the nostalgia, the comfort of my former years. For adulthood is too hard to face. Escapism, escapism. There's so much justification for escapism these days. It's only going to get worse. There's going to be so much. My dear listener, you have to be careful. You have to. I say have to. Wean yourself off. Of this industry. Of these markets. Of these artificial intelligent algorithms of nostalgia. They're, they're, they're already infused into so much of the generations. In fact, outside of the outside of the uh, internet, they did the, they, they, they did this very thing for for uh, for for forty baby boomers. Think about it. Channels. 
and to, to, and, to, and still to a great effect, Generation X as well. The internet was definitely more targeted towards us and, and Z. But for, for baby boomers, boomers and X, there were TV channels, magazines, seminars, getaways. Shoot. <laughs> Dare I say even a number of church services and camps and conference centers that were targeted towards what? Targeted towards what? Their younger years. Their, the prime of their adulthood, their 20s and 30s. The years of their 20s and 30s. Especially think about TV, t- TV channels. All, of, all the shows and movies of their youth. And same things happening to a lot of us too as well, right? Like, you know, like, amongst us millennials, they're bringing back a lot of our, a lot of our, I mean, even video games. All the, you know, for Generation X and millennials, they're bringing back all the classics from the 80s and 90s and 2000s. You know, amongst N- Nintendo and Microsoft and whatnot, PlayStation, Sony. Now you can, now you can, they're, uh, they were, they're redux, revamped, uh, upscaled, upscaled new editions of the games. Higher graphics and slightly altered storylines that fit more of the current, the current, uh, political sentiments, political and social sentiments now. <laughs> There's an industry, there's a market, there's a, there's, there's subversion, all in the name of mammon. So I dare say, you need to wean yourself off. Lest you find the five to be doubtful of reality. Skeptical of eternal promises. And yet, find comfort in what? Same old thing. Literally the same old thing. Same old thing. And why? Because in due time these things will be forgotten. The Lord tarries, it so much will be for, for, forgotten. Including the fact that the prime thing is, and why are so many people from Z soon and Alpha? But they'll be coming of age soon. But from Alpha to Boomers, what do we all have in common? We are not addressing the darkness in our own hearts, in our own souls, that clouds our minds. Even amongst us believers, neglecting, neglecting to take care of the temple of the Lord God, to keep it holy, so that His light may shine in it, that there may be life in us. And why? Because society says, hey, you're not a bad person. You deserve it. Just do it. Blah, blah, blah. Same old thing they told our elders and they're telling the children. Same old thing. Same thing that got them to become irres- got, got our elders, the boomers, become irresponsible, covetous, money hungry, forgetful, arrogant. Same thing happening to us. We can point the fingers all we want, but guess. But here's the thing: it's a, it's it's hypocrisy, and it's rather pointless to blame those you hate and yet become like them, if not worse. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain; ye are yet in your sins. You are saved. You should not be living according to your flesh, like those before us, like our forefathers, who clung to nostalgic mammon, to be like those, as few as they may be, young and old. Well, go over to verse 21. For since by man came death, By man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, 
Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. You know, it's quite funny, really. I bring up mortality, I bring up death, I bring up the fact that we are aging, and we are going to be surrounded by so many of us witnessing that we're all getting closer and closer to the end of our lives. And thus, there'll be a great temptation, a great plea, a demand to escape. I pray indeed. Pray indeed. Do not live as if Christ is not resurrected from, from the dead. For that means what? You are resigning to die in sin, to die in darkness, to die in deception. But live in hope. Live in the light. Live in truth. Live with love. A love that sacrifices everything for everyone, knowing that there is an abundant eternal life to come at the right hand of the Father. Let us live a life that has no end. Let us live a life where the heck with having no, you know, re, you know, re, you know, regrets. We'll have them. Let's live a life forgiven, repentant, and restored. And like Paul said, I am that I am. Why? Because the grace of the Lord got in me. The old man is dead. The dying man that looks after his former days. Let us be, be men who look forward to forever. A future with no end. Ah, uh, youth. Imagine that. Permanent youth. Permanent youth. And no more of this nonsense. Then cometh, verse 24, then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, Jesus Christ. He lives for the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. In due time, my dear listeners. Due time. You say, it's been so long. <sighs> Please, long. How long does a man live? Think about that. For some of us, as short as the womb. But for many of us, throughout, our, throughout the ages, mm. 30, 40, in the modern era, 80s, less than a century. And that's it. So how long has any man actually waited? Think about that. It has been long. For us men who die, time is uh, quite the oxymoron. <laughs> Especially when we constantly look where. We say we're looking forward, but we're always finding comfort, always finding our motivation looking back. Book of Ecclesiastes says, Don't treat the former years as better than the current. Oh, amen. Amen. Yeah, there was advantages of, 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 of a body, my body, ten years ago. But my soul, oh, my soul was in such a worse state compared to now and Lord Terry's 10 years even better 10 years blessed be those men those abundant eternal men even right there geriatrics in, wheel, in electric wheelchairs with oxygen tanks hooked up to them I remember them in my childhood in my youth as a younger man 
Oh, yes. <laughs> they were looking forward. And thus, they bore fruit for us younger folk to nourish on and to be ready to fight the good fight and finish this race. Oh, yes. <laughs> Those are men who, who, who believed in the resurrection, who did not live in their sin, who, who were no longer old men. Oh, they were ready to become new. I want you to think about that. All those old men who have died, died in the grace of our Lord God, they're younger than us now. More hip, cool, savvy, and relevant than we are. And one day we shall join them. In the meantime, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Verse 25 and verse 26. Here's why, my dear listeners. Then cometh the end, when he... Sorry about that. For he must reign, Jesus Christ, must reign, till he hath put all enemies under his feet. And we think to ourselves, yes, he'll defeat the government and big business and big tech and big pharma, big education and big, big... No, 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 no. No, it's all small potatoes. It's all nothing. Those are our enemies. I pray for their self. Among them, those in them, I pray for their salvation. I pray that they become new creatures too, and we can all be brethren. In the meantime, though, if they be enemies of the Lord God, well, God have mercy upon them. But what do I got against them? After all, they'll be going one way, I'll be going another. For them, death will be, well, here's the thing. If you look back to the past, to your former years of fleshly, worldly indulgence, and that's all you want, that's all you're going to get. And let me tell you something, it's not fireproof. What, what did I do to like deserve this, we say? <laughs> Says those who have not looked in the mirror. Says those who have not had an honest look at mankind, past, present, oh, and our plans for the future. Verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And thus ends forever a population of former youth. Thus ends forever this vain, stupid, dare I say it, retarded clinging to childhood, the nostalgia for blissful, ignorant years. Yeah, I am pessimistic about the decisions and aspirations, ambitions, and direction of mankind. But I am so hopeful for the will, the way, the life the Lord God has for those who will receive it. Ah. It makes everything else so irrelevant. So trivial. So childish. Fantasy. But don't take my word for it. It's, it's all his, from Genesis to Revelation. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Be not old men any more, but become new forevermore. And it can all start today, or you can get right back into it if you've you know, 
I've said enough. Squish and MC Fulmer, signing out.